Hello everyone, Chris Geyer here, Product Manager for Storage Point at Metalogix. Today I just wanted to walk you through the install process for our new version 3.0. First we start off with the splash page and you can just click on Run Storage Point Install from there, which will bring up a basic wizard that will walk you through the process. You can see that we have our basic system check here to make sure that you're not going to run into any problems. And of course we've got our regular uh, license agreement here that I know everyone reads, so you'll accept that. Now you need to specify where your storage point database is going to be, what server it's going to be on, and how you want authentication to run, etc. So we'll make sure everything is there and we'll test it and it looks like we're not going to have a problem with that. Now you need to set up how your authentication is going to be for SharePoint to access Storage Point. Now by default this is going to use the SharePoint app pool which is what we're going to recommend and you just test that connection and everything's good. We'll go on next and you can see that it starts to roll out those solutions to the solution store and everything that Storage Point does is based on this. It's all uh, a great uh, solution that is used in the framework of SharePoint, etc. So you've got nothing else or nothing wonky to worry about there. You can see it's activating the feature, and in just a moment we should see that it's done. It is, so we can click Next and see a little message that shows everything was completed normally. There we go, solution deployment done. At this point, we've deployed the, the solution to our SharePoint environment, and we need to activate the license. Click on Activate. We'll put in our registration key here. We'll scroll down and make sure that we put in some appropriate uh, credentials. So we'll type in our username and password. Don't anybody look. My password is dot, 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 dot. We'll activate that. And we'll wait for it to, to run that job and ensure that it activates the license successfully. And done. Clicking on Continue, we can move on and configure some basics for Storage Point to have it working. Now that we've got that license stuff out of the way, we can move on to the real meat. So if I close this and return to the central admin interface, I'm going to set up some general settings. And what these general settings are, are that going to be the defaults that get put into place as I create other things like endpoints and profiles, etc. The first thing on the screen is the ability to send notifications to certain addresses, and you can put in multiple ones there. This also will generate warnings if there's a certain amount of free space, or if they're taking endpoints offline, if there are a certain number of errors, etc. So we'll scroll down. You can see I can specify default adapters and some default settings for encryption and compression, uh, retained orphan blob amounts, uh, timer jobs, etc. But for now, we'll leave the rest in there, and we'll save that and move back. Now it's time to set up our first endpoint. So I'll create a new endpoint. And endpoints are just uh, storage locations. We'll call this one local. You can see I added in uh, the default settings that were from general settings that are already populated there. I can, of course, change those. We'll use the default file system adapter since this is just a, a basic NTFS file share. And we'll point it to a server and NTFS file share. Now, of course, we don't want to bring this online without testing it first, so we'll test it and it's done and save. Just for good measure we'll create another one. We'll call this one NAS. This will be to the little NAS I have in the closet. We'll use the, the file system adapter. We'll put in its IP address and a share on that NAS. And we'll test this one as well. And it works so we'll save that. Now I have a couple of default endpoints that I can use in my profiles. So we'll go back to the central admin interface. But first, I want to set up some system cache that I can use for 
asynchronous writes. You can tell that I've already put some in there. We'll test those to make sure they work and those are successful. But now system cache is enabled and we can do some, some more things with, with how files are, are promoted, etc. Now it's important to note that the EBS provider is not yet activated. Uh, it's not activated by default, so you have to come in and take a conscious effort to actually activate that. Uh, nothing is done by default for you there. So as I click Activate, it'll warn me, and I just make sure I, I read that and click Activate again. And it's going to do an IAS reset, so make sure you're aware of that. We'll close that. So now we know that EBS is ready to be used. And to take advantage of it, we're going to create some storage profiles. I'll create my first profile, click Create New Profile. I'll give this one a name and make this descriptive so when you're going back you can, you can uh, uh, get to it right away. We're going to call this one Departments since I'm going to set up the scope to be the Department Site Collection. I can select that from the list, say OK. I don't want to auto folder content or anything like that, but I do want to make the endpoints asynchronous, so I'll select that. Then I'll add one of my endpoints. I can select from the list of the ones that I just created. We'll make this one local. I can set up the, the start folder, but I won't do that in this case. And that's just the root folder that it creates that everything else will be put underneath it. I want to make sure I promote the, the folder in the blob store as well as the, the file name and file extension so that if I look through my blob store, I can see each directory and file name just as it would be normally. You can see I can also set up some additional criteria in here, such as filters on file type, file size. Uh, I can also get uh, very granular in terms of content types, which lists, etc. But this is a, a basic configuration, so I'll just say OK, and I'll save that. Now with that profile created, new content that gets inserted into that site collection that we just selected will be externalized, but the stuff that's already there uh, will not be externalized right away. You actually need to make a conscious action to have it be externalized, and uh, with the storage point details pane, you can see that it's actually in the content database still. But, since we want to take advantage of storage point, we want to take that out of there, so we'll go back to our profile, We'll go to the timer jobs that actually perform the externalization of stuff that's already in there. And we're going to analyze and estimate how much is in there and what it's going to take to get it out. You can see that for a, a demo, it's not that much in there. But uh, for your environment, it, it will be different. It can estimate all of that, etc. So we'll externalize that. And that's going to fire up a timer job to run. And in a couple of magical demo minutes, it'll be done. And we can go back to our site collection, click on that same storage point details pane, and see that it's in that blob store that we created as an endpoint and used in the profile. Just like magic, and it works great, doesn't it? Thanks for watching, everyone. Be on the lookout for more videos coming your way very soon. Chris Geyer signing off.